You were right, though. Louis, you're not sitting here. I saw him chair. How about the lighting? Oh, yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, Louis, you're not sitting here. I'll have no audio. Treating your well. Good to see you. Hey, good to see you. It's good. How are you? Good. Yeah, it went really well. That uh, presentation was really good. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I hope it won't stick around. No, no, no. You had a good one. Uh, yeah, I had to watch it. Oh, you didn't think I see it. Oh, okay. But I heard it. It was nice that they accommodated it. You could have my seat. Yeah, no. That's just a good Yeah, no, you got great reviews. And, yeah, that was really good. Good to see. You'll have to do a part two sometime. Yeah. Or I'm sorry. Well, Janice is saying that we'll be yeah. run it again. Yeah, great. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, nice to see you. <coughs>
by Walter. All in favor? Okay. Item 5 is our consent items. Item 5.1 is a heritage permit application, delegated approvals uh, for renovations, window and door replacements at 552 Ridge Road, Stone Creek. May I have a motion to receive item 5.1? Can I flag one thing here, please? Um, is that appropriate? I know sometimes uh, on delegated approvals, we're not supposed to. Uh, really we can comment on them. We just. Can we? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm concerned because um, I, I went up and I took a look at the, the windows here at uh, the, the Women's Institute. They're, they're on the subordinate side. I know that. That's probably the reason why they're, they're going. But it still, is, if these are part of the, the historic addition. Um, and they're, they're in great shape. And I, my concern is that um, as heritage people, uh, we want to make sure our, uh, our buildings survive. We don't want, my concern here is uh, attrition. As we remove uh, heritage materials, we're setting the, the uh, president here for 20 years, whatever, down the road. Um, you know, what's next to go, sort of thing, right? Um, I think it's important that. Uh, I really think we should take another look at the, just the window part of it. Uh, they seem to be fine. I don't know if anyone's made a phone call to the, the Women's Institute people and, and, and just said if, if it's a um, if it's a, um, uh, um, a problem with the performance uh, that could be addressed. As far as I'm concerned, I, I looked at these windows. There's, there's nothing wrong with them. We have local crafts people here that can work work on these. You'd be one of them. Um, no, I, I would. I wouldn't do any work. I, I, I would never do any work on, on that building. But we have, uh, you know, Alan here does work like that. There's a lot of local people who can do uh, work there on, on this. On this uh, I really believe we, we're just caretakers of these properties, and we're, we're, we're just here to pass them on in good condition. And I'm concerned that we're setting this uh, precedent by getting rid of these, uh, these windows. There's the standard and guidelines that uh, that tell us we're, we're, we're to. Uh, respect all the layers of, of a historic site. You know, it's in the rules. It's uh, these are international. They come from international rules. So I just like to, you know, to address that. Madam Chair, can I ask maybe for you to elicit the because I understand there's some works going on and, and let's look at the other side of this. It's the Federated Women's Institute of Ontario. We're very proud that Councillor Johnson has worked very hard for this organization. We were actually going to lose the whole building a few years back. They have their headquarters in Guelph. They had no interest in maintaining the, the original homestead several years ago. Kathy Lake would, would know that. And um, so now they have decided that they're going to actually bring their head office to this facility. And I'm just questioning whether some of these changes are with regards to how they kind of lay out their office and the store, which currently is, takes up that space that they want to So maybe for you, Phyllis, can you clarify? Through the chair, just to yeah, provide some clarity. So in terms of uh, what the person was mentioning, that is the, the reason for the renovations to the site. And to just, um, I guess, appease your concerns, uh, Walter, it's actually the, the contemporary storm window that's being replaced on the side. And then the two rear windows are contemporary vinyl windows. But the actual wood window that remains on the side um, in the dormer is being restored. But it's the exterior storm that's being replaced with a new wood compatible wood, uh, wood storm. So okay. there, are, there is no loss in existing heritage traffic in terms of windows. The only ones that are being replaced are vinyl windows. And they're being replaced with uh, sympathetic wood windows. Okay, because when I see uh, the east and the south side, and I go back there, I see two on two historic windows that are one over ones. They are uh, wood. So wood. those aren't the windows in question. If you'd like, I can provide you with some documentation and, and which windows are actually yeah, concerned. Okay. And if you'd like to follow up, you can. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Good, good points, valid points. Just so committee's aware, yeah, we're yeah, thrilled to have them yes. taking back the homestead. Yeah, so. we certainly are. Absolutely. Okay. And, um, two meetings were attended by the director of the Women's Institute. One it was a preliminary presentation about what she wanted to do. And we were very excited. Everybody on the committee was very excited about that. I mean, and we stressed the importance of maintaining uh, as much of the heritage fabric as possible, particularly the windows. And uh, there was some discussion in the preliminary one that it might be vinyl that was going to be used, and that was discussed that that probably would not get approval. 
the second meeting, she came in with a wonderful presentation and nice schematics of what's going to happen and, and the, what kind of doors are going to be. And I do believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that it was unanimous, the approvals that she received that day. And there was an awful lot of excitement and enthusiasm from everybody on the committee about what's going to happen. May I have a motion to receive item 5.1.1? Wolf, Councilman Peterson, all in favor? Okay. Item 5.1.2 is our heritage permit application, removal of existing carport construction and new site addition garage to 118 Mill Street North in Waterdale. Uh, this is an item, added item. May I have a motion to receive? Michael, seconded by Kathy. All in favor? Okay. Item 5.1.3 is another uh, added item. It's a heritage permit application for replacement of entrance doors and the cleaning of the entrance surrounds at 45 Main Street East in Hamilton, the Johnson Inca Courthouse. May I have a motion to receive item 5.1.3? Michael, second by Council Pearson. All in favor? Good. Item 5.2 is our heritage property designations. Uh, this, again, is an added item. It's our 5.2.1 notice of designation by law for 1284 Main Street East in Hamilton, Delta Secondary School. Uh, good stuff. May I have a motion to receive item 5.2.1? Kathy, seconded by Ron. All in favor? Carried. Any opposed? <laughs> yeah, uh, our next item is item six, is our delegations. Uh, we have our added item for our speaker today. I'd like to call upon Janice Brown to speak as a delegate. Welcome, Janice. Thank you. Um, I hope you don't mind that I stand. I think I'm too nervous to sit. Um, first of all, uh, thank you uh, to Janine for getting me on the agenda. I do know that. Uh, uh, this happened very quickly, but uh, Mr. Santiago, Argo, uh, please, if I'm, if I'm not pronouncing your name correctly, please let me know. I'm trying. Um, apparently decided that he could make this meeting, and I think that's terrific, rather early than later, so I appreciate that. Um, and I'm looking around this table, and I know that you're all volunteers, and your work is much appreciated. I, too, am a volunteer, and I'm hoping that what I have to say will not offend you in any way. But I have to let you know I'm very passionate about um, our built heritage. And um, I know you are just as passionate about that. Otherwise, you would not be volunteering your time here. Uh, there has been a lot of information that's come my way within, I'd say, the last four or five days. And uh, it started with this second uh, letter that I, actually a third letter that I sent off to uh, various people, and you have this at the back of your agenda items. So I'm hoping that most of you would have had the opportunity to look at it, because I certainly will be referring to it, because it actually creates more questions for me. And I'll bring some of those questions up. Um, secondly, where am I going with this now? I need to think about this. Secondly, um, this memorandum, I have my presentation. I shall continue with what I said to the following people. Um, I addressed this to uh, my counselor, Jason Farr, uh, counselor Brian McCaddy, Maria Pearson, and counselor Lloyd Ferguson. I also addressed this to uh, your chair, Alyssa Denham Robinson. I addressed it to Chris Murray. I addressed it to the mayor, and I did address it to all of city council. And um, I have to follow through with it because I made some very good points, and I was making my points based on my knowledge and the knowledge that was given to me. And since the memorandum arrived from Steve Robichaud, I understand that there are some things that really I guess I was taking for granted and maybe you two would have been taken for granted. So I shall point these things out and then I guess if you have questions, feel free to ask them. So my letter, if you don't mind, I shall read it. And it was with regard to the delegation of council consent to staff for alterations to designated property under the Ontario Heritage Act PED 05096 bracket A citywide. And my second um, attention area was correspondence to staff, council representatives, and municipal heritage committee chair, October 26, 2013, November 4, 2013, and November 6, 2013. So I've got two areas of concern. I'm writing again on behalf of the Duran Neighborhood Association about the recent approval to demolish four-fifths of James Street Baptist Church. 
This correspondence comes following the April 3rd meeting to discuss the issues of the Duran Neighborhood Association and receipt of the staff report meeting uh, regarding the delegated approval sent to me by Megan House. That document, I, that staff report, I did not have in my hands, and that was a very important document that I should have had in my hands because it probably would have saved me a lot of legwork. And being a newbie to this and not being um, active in heritage, uh, except in my own neighborhood. I've had to do a lot of reading, a lot of digging, and I'm not so sure I have all the answers, and maybe the people that were giving me the answers, they were a bit incorrect. However, this staff report said, in considering heritage permit applications for substantial changes to heritage building fabric, or those involving significant landmark buildings and particularly complex issues, it is anticipated that these will be flagged by staff members of the subcommittees or council representatives on the Hamilton, and at that time it was LACAC, <coughs> Municipal Heritage Committee. Such extraordinary applications would be forwarded for full consideration by the Hamilton LACAC Municipal Heritage Committee and then to the Director of Development and Real Estate for approval. In certain instances, particularly where there may be controversial aspects to the applications, these would be forwarded to the Planning and Economic Development Committee and Council for consideration and final approval. And according to the memorandum that Mr. Robichaud sent to me and you have, this statement that I read that I thought was so important, because it certainly gave me a lot of inter information about what I might think was controversial or substantial or complex or whatever, was never formalized. My question, why was it not formalized? And if you're not going to formalize it, why would you even have it in the report? So that makes things very difficult for someone that is not a cultural heritage planner, or somebody sitting on this particular committee that is familiar with all of the rules in place. And I'm going to ask you, you don't have to answer me, have you read that staff report? And I commend you if you have. I wished I'd had it sooner. That's my fault. So my questions, why did staff and council representatives not recognize that James Street Baptist was an extraordinary application. Why was the application not flagged, and why did it not proceed to full consideration by Municipal Heritage Committee? And lastly, why did the Municipal Heritage Committee, Permit Review Committee, staff and council reps not realize that this was a controversial issue that should have been forwarded to Planning and Economic Development Committee and Council for consideration and final approval? Reading this, as I sent this information around to the Durand Neighborhood Association and several other Duranders, because I've had, I've had several comments from those, them as well, and we thought, okay, the word substantial. This is four-fifths, 80%, I don't care, two-thirds, however you want to cut it, of a designated building that's going to be demolished. This is a significant landmark building. I've got Paul Wilson sitting in here, and from one of his CBC articles, he writes, James Street Baptist, 1878, is the southern gateway to Hamil Hamilton's famous five, including St. Paul's Presbyterian, 1854, the Bank of Montreal, 1928, the Sun Life Building, 1905, and the Pigot Building, 1928. This is a complex issue in that the church is designated, that the heritage impact assessment was commissioned by the developer, that Permit Review Committee did not advise the city to seek a peer review, and that the developer only provided concept plans and not a site plan or anything close to it. And lastly, an extraordinary application. As the chair of the Permit Review stated, the biggest decision the committee has made in its history and most important downtown heritage decision. This material I pulled from every article that I could find, and I, at the bottom of your page, there must be 10 to 12 articles, and that was just the tip of the iceberg, because I didn't go into all of the blog sites. So my question to you folks is, if you're, you disregarded this statement, then how in heaven's name did you make the decision to not have this go forward 
the Planning and Economic Development and Council. I don't know what your criteria is, and I certainly would like to learn what that is. I think it's important because I currently live in the Durand, and we are a historic neighborhood. We probably have more designated uh, buildings in that neighborhood, and we have two conservation districts. And any of these buildings, if we do not have some kind of criteria in place, could come down. I'll read something to you that was said to me by somebody whom I respect, if I can find it. I hope I brought it. Aha. Uh -huh. It says, the interpretation of the Heritage Act by the City Council, this is our City Council's, renders the Heritage Act useless piece of legislation on all accounts, as any small segment of the building left standing would be defined as an alteration rather than a demolition. Not to put too fine a point on it, but a small section of the building foundation or footing could be left in place underground and it would still be considered an alteration rather than demolition. There is, therefore, no such thing as demolition by this definition, because where does one draw the line? City Council has effectively left the door open so any designated building in the city can be systematically demolished, save a small portion. Upon decision by appointed heritage staff without any involvement from the community, my second sore point, to which the city serves, and also without any legislative force rendered from the Ontario Heritage Act. As I said to you the last time I was here, it is really important, folks, that you around this table, myself and any, any of us that are interested in heritage, that we need to make some changes. Otherwise, we are going to lose all of our downtown built heritage. You know, I have waited so long to speak. I would really like to finish. I have just one more very important point. I am the only delegation besides the developer. So please let me have this small amount of time. Thank you. I realize that this is an extraordinary case. Thank you. Correspondence. The Duran Neighborhood uh, Neighborhood Association sent. I'm upset. Sorry. The Duran Neighborhood Association sent a letter to Councillor Farr. <clears throat> excuse me. In October, stating their concerns and suggestions. We did not receive any acknowledgement regarding our suggestions and concerns, except for one question that I cannot find the answer to, and it was with regard to what happens when the building comes down and nothing gets built and it is a parking lot, or left empty. Considering the severity of the request to demolish 80% of this heritage landmark building, did staff, permit review, council, and municipal heritage committee receive this letter? Did you read that first letter? And it was sent October the 15th, and it was following a September 25th meeting that I attended. It is my understanding also, and this is serious, folks, that emails from David Cumming, former, former senior heritage consultant, by the way, who wrote that report in 2005 for the city of Hamilton, currently the cultural heritage planning and conservation consultant, were sent to the chair of the municipal heritage committee, staff and council representatives, stating in light of all the press co coverage, this was a controversial alteration that should allow delegations and that this application be addressed by the MHC and not by delegated approval. The chair of the Municipal Heritage Committee agreed this should not go through delegated approval but be vetted by Municipal Heritage Committee. There was no follow-up and no review by the Municipal Heritage Committee. Why did this not happen? This was a very serious question that must be answered. And again, I'll refer to the memorandum I have to folks because this got thrown at me on Tuesday. And the memorandum says that there were periodic updates to this particular committee and there was a detailed staff report and discussion. I truly would love to see the discussion around this table and what was said. Surely all of you did not agree that this was not a controversial issue. Or if you did, then you must have criteria that I truly need to see. And one more minute. And until these questions are answered, until something is done due diligence, then I suggest that the Municipal Heritage Committee really does not serve a purpose. I am sorry, but I am frustrated, I am upset, and um, just another thing, by the way, in the paper, it appears that um, the foundations of the municipal, uh, of the Heritage Ruins in Ancaster is going to come to this committee and uh, to be vetted by this committee. I suggest a building that's been standing well over 100 years also deserves a lot of attention. Thank you for your time. I'm sorry I did go over, but I had a lot to say. I actually have more to say, but that's not unusual. You can ask Councillor Farr about that. Thank you.
Thank you. Uh, just, just I can answer for one thing. It's the comments that you said that I had spoken in regards to this going further. Mm -hmm. uh, my comments were taken out of context as to how that response came about. We have followed the procedure that is set in place. Um, that, that particular email that came about was in regards to how we move forward and needing to review it. That so. is the only email that I have access to and it was sent to me. So those points need to be stated. And as I said, I did not have all the answers when I came here and that's one of the reasons. So I think what we need to make clear though is this committee has followed the procedures that are in place to make this application proceed in whatever fashion it has proceeded. I, and you know what? I'm not arguing that. I am arguing that I obviously think there's, there's criteria that I'm not familiar with and I still want to know how the decision was made. And that, I, I have no knowledge of that. Do we have any questions of the delegation? Uh, the, uh, the bump up procedure. Am I understand reading that and reading Steve's memorandum, uh, is that bump up procedure never did become part of the bylaw then? That's not something that's to... Uh, yeah, through the chair, it was not formalized in the bylaw. So um, there's really just the process that uh, you have done through delegated approval or you go through the council or something like that. Um, okay, I think that's something that uh, we, should, we should take a look at. Uh, I don't think it's going to help us on this one, but uh, it seems to me it should sure be in place for future projects. And I was in attendance with during the meeting that we reviewed Council Farr was there, um, Janice was there on behalf. And I think that's sort of the main issue that came out is that we know that the number of years have now passed. And so we need to review the procedural bylaws for problems. That that's actually on the, the list of something that needs to be policy and design. Is there any other questions? Thanks for coming in. Um, regarding the Hermitage, yeah, they're not coming here yet. Uh, next it's week. Just what I read in the paper. Okay. No, yeah, no, it says they're going to the permit review. Mm -hmm. it's, they're, they're one of the agenda items for next week. They're coming in with a full proposal about taking down the walls. Yes, they talk about excessive. Oh, it is excessive. Uh, they, they came a while ago with a preliminary, and uh, it's, they're going to be about three and a half feet high. It, it's for liability reasons. They mm -hmm. actually uh, admitted it was for liability. That the insurance is going to be too high if they keep it up there. But they're coming in next week, and it should be an interesting meeting. Mm -hmm. That's affirmative. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
further appreciation for the issue generally of heritage than I probably ever would have had I not been an elected uh, official for downtown Hamilton. But there's economic development, there's densities, there's a whole bunch of other aspects that I factor in when I come to conclusions and they're not always cut and dry. Certainly in this case, that's not one of those situations where it was. However, when you weigh it all out, all things considered, and respecting and appreciating the other side and, and ultimately seeing the review already occurring, we are here and we are going to be in a better place. So thanks for the opportunity, for the speaking uh, opportunity and for Janice's delegation. Thank you. And thank you, Councillor Farr and everyone around the table that are working on that review. It's uh, certainly going to be a welcome change. So thank you, Janice, for your presentation and on behalf of the Journey <coughs> Association. May I have a motion to receive the presentation? Michael, seconded by Councillor Pearson. All in favor? Okay. Uh, our next item is item 7.1. Uh, I'd like to call Mr. Luis Santavita uh, to speak on behalf of Jones Street Baptist Church and for your design. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Committee. I'm going to stand up, not because I'm nervous, because I'm short. So I'm <laughs> that's okay. And I may pace around a bit if that's okay. So I don't want I don't want Paul's neck to fall hey, to him. Yeah. But thank you, Janice, for your presentation, and I, lo I love and adore your passion thank around you. heritage. I say that sincerely. Thank um, you. But I say this sincerely. So, so do I. Okay, I'll stand over there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Paul. <laughs> but so do I. Yeah. And I probably have just the vigor that you do, the passion that you do, the commitment you do as well. And I want to say that maybe a little bit more. And I'll get That's into that. That's hard to believe. That's not hard to believe when you find that this is not an atypical building when it comes to heritage and when these policies were written and when these regulations and rules were, were written. So I, I can't comment on the rules and regulations and the policy, but I will comment on this in terms of since I stepped into the plate in this building, we have worked hand in hand with the city and we I would like to say we're in the midst of going sleepless nights now currently because I've put some timelines around our design team but I can tell you this that um, there's no question that your city has worked very hard to make sure that every single policy and procedure has been kept I will tell you that we've gone beyond and they may speak to that as they, as they choose and it was a negotiation between Steve and his team and Megan was fantastic. It's one of the very first buildings where you actually get a letter of credit to ensure that you're going to maintain preservation. I want to make that clear. A letter of credit, okay. Okay, so this is one of the very, very first buildings in Ontario. That's how much I'm committed to keeping and preserving this church. So there's, the intent is not to have a hole. The intent is not to have a park. I mean, staff knows it. We, we can't get there. I know we've made some conceptual designs of where we're sitting and where we're going. But the reality is we view this as a community changer for, for the downtown core, for, for Jason's work. And, and Jason's been kept abreast of where we're going as, as, as often as we can. Um, things are progressing well. Um, you can tell now that there is 40. Uh, we closed the road off. So, so we are surgically peering through the building as we speak right now to see exactly how much we can maintain. I'll give you an update as to where we speak. There's a structural wall being built, was you know, negotiated with, with the city so we can maintain that for wind loads, uh, temperature, um, moisture, delta T's. So we're actually doing something a little different. And we've got freezer panels going up a structural wall so we can maintain some of that integrity moving forward. So we're in the design links of this, of this project currently. Um, we can talk to some detail, but it's very little detail. But I can tell you that this is not a typical process. This man didn't want to do it this way. This man would rather have gone to his planning and gone through a regular process unequivocally and not spent the money in advance not knowing what we're going to be able to build. This is the challenge. This is a big challenge. This is not typical. This has been undertaken because of the structural integrity of the building. Otherwise, I would have been happy to do this in June, July, August, next year. So that's part of the challenge this gentleman has in designing the building and concepts is we don't know exactly how we're going to tie in the link yet. We're working on it. We're working on par parking issues. So this is not typical. So I would s suffice it to say that even if a policy was in place, this is still not a typical building. 
that undertakes of this type of work at this time in the process. So it's not typical. So you, you have an individual, you have a corporation that really wants to preserve as much of the church as possible, and, and you'll see that we'll be going beyond what the city requirements are, because we're trying to salvage even more stainless, as you'll probably, sorry, uh, stainless uh, stained glass. Uh, so you'll see a lot more of those being removed in anticipation of reusing them in the new building. Uh, we've got a lot of really interesting designs for public space and whatnot that are going to be incorporating this that would not, never have been incorporated if this building should have collapsed. So that's the biggest thing I wanted to update you on is that we have been working vigorously with, with the city and we've gotten, we've gotten to this point that we continue to work and we'll probably be in seeing Stephen and his team, I'm going to say four weeks on a real concept plan, so we're pushing like crazy to move forward. So you will see signs going up, so the hoarding is up, you'll see signs where we'll have websites now, we'll try to keep the public uh, posted over the next two, three months. Um, so all of that's happening, so we're, we're going to garner interest in the project. Um, so that's where we sit in terms of today. Um, where we'll be tomorrow, I'm always the eternal optimist, we'll be in a great mixed use development revitalizing and emerging the what I call James Street South between Corktown and James Street North and hopefully that brings a revitalization into that part of the community that's so badly needed and, uh, and, and with all due respect is needed as soon as possible. That's all I have to say really in terms of where we sit to date because that's really essentially where we sit and you can tell we're working hard because we're on site now and crews are mounted so I'm actually more excited now than I was before um, because I know we'll be doing our damnedest to preserve that that church. There was no, there was an alternative, and we decided not to go down that route. Thank you. Uh, amongst our members, is there any questions? I won't go behind you yet, Paul. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, I mean, you understand why we care about this building. It's, it's we care enough about it that it be designated. And normally, that means that it gets saved. Um, and when you purchased this building, you too believed that it would be saved. You admire your passion, and you had passion for it. And, you, and, and Drew uh, had had declared that the last reason that this man bought this property was to tear down the building. Absolutely not. That's not going to happen. Um, things changed, and uh, we, you know, things change in the project. The, the fear is that things change again that you tear down 80% of it, and then we're left with, with nothing. I guess the question is, uh, why uh, we, we've heard no detail whatsoever on the plan today, and I think that's what troubles us, and that's the same thing that has troubled us on, on Gore Park, where Mr. Blanchard wants to knock down buildings with, with no plan. Um, the Why does uh, the building need to come down before you have a, a plan in place? The safety issue, structural integrity of the building. But that building was never, the, the city had never said that that building needed to be reinforced, did it, or perhaps I'm wrong? No, it, it didn't. I think we've gone through that already, that, but we, we, the decision that you made was because of that. So that was all presented uh, clearly. Is, is the three. city telling you that it needs to be torn down now? The city has issued the alteration permit. We're, we're, we're currently... They've given you a demolition permit, but it wasn't the city's order that you tear down the building. No. So I'm saying, why does it need to come down now before we know what's going in place? As I said to you, it's a safety issue. Not in the city view. I'm not sure about that. They've, they've issued no demolition order. You received a demolition request. We have we have a demolition permit. <clears throat> okay, uh, you. I'm sure you have some kind of idea of what you're going to put there. I think that would uh, perhaps put us more at ease. Can, can you share a little more of what? No, you I can't, Paul. I told you that it would come out in about four weeks. You'll get full concepts. There's, uh, there's no. We can't tell you more than that. We can't tell because it's changing as we meet every day. There's six full-time design. Design changes every day. Struct there's structural issues that can take care, mechanical issues. We're dealing with horizon on issues of 
uh, as our counselor knows, they're, they change by the day. There's a lot that happens when you design within a heritage building. Okay. So I can't tell you the exact, except to say that it will be a mixed-use site. It will be a multi-level site, and that's that's all I can tell you. And the, the idea here is There's that we will, have, we, will, we will have residential, we will have hopefully some cafes and uh, restaurants, and there'll be, as I said to you earlier, there will be some public areas that we're trying to bring to the space. We're confined, quite frankly, because of the retention of the preservation. So we're very restricted in the footprint for design. So structural is extremely important, hence it's changing by, by the day based on the concept of the design. Uh, originally, you hoped that the uh, you hoped that the north wall could be saved. What's the status of that now? We're going to save as much of that as we can. Uh, whatever won't be saved will be part of the public area that will be reinstalled, reused as part of maybe even become structural wall again. We'll see, but it will be used in what I call a gallery area. Okay. Last question: When do you hope that uh, this project will be complete? Hope is market will tell me that. Big part. The market will tell me that. Well, you mean in terms of if it's condos, you need to sell seventy percent. Uh, right. Do you, but do you have concerns that that might not? You know, we have a lot of condos on the market. Uh, no, I don't no. have any concerns currently. So, two, three years away? Uh, is that Time frame? Yeah. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> I've been in the building, as you know, as you were. I've read the engineering report, the engineering report that was done before uh, Louis purchased the building. And I'm surprised that the demolition order from the city was not put out earlier. But now it doesn't need to be put out because they've applied for a demolition permit. Now, my thinking, and you've heard was before, there a demolition order from the city? no, it doesn't no. need to be one because they've applied right. for a demolition exactly. permit. Exactly. Well, we're not arguing. I'm, I'm speaking. I either. think we are. But, uh, okay, no, I'm speaking now. Okay. Yeah, the, what I would like uh, I'd like to say is that the fact that some of it is going to be coming down is good actually because if it doesn't come down, I have a feeling that it's all going to come down. And my line is, I'd rather save some of it than none of it. Wondering, um, have you? You say you want to preserve as much as possible, if you could. Um, like I know of some examples, many examples of buildings um, seems to have been in bad shape, possibly worse than yours that have been um, preserved. Um, so in heritage, um, I'm finding that if there's the will, there's there's the ability to do it. Um, I, mean, I, I know of uh, structures built without foundations that pass the building permit process. In Ontario, um, some dry stone wall buildings, timber frame buildings. This building's been uh, been there for 100, I don't know, 40 years. So, you know, you can say what you want about the rules and how it was built back in the day, but it's still there. Um, I've seen walls that have been bowed out, and uh, they've been they've been preserved, they've been rebuilt, and so on. So I'm just wondering if you were if were open to that, or it's not doable at all. We've looked at every scenario. It's hard for you to believe, but you might want to have a look at this building. I've, I've worked on dozens of heritage buildings throughout the country. This is by far the worst. The rest were condemned. To your point. And I respect where you're coming from, but I can tell you having worked on them personally, and when we talk foundations, look at the loads. If you can get a structural engineer, we couldn't find three, so good luck in finding one. We, we didn't find them then, we're not finding them today. So the, the circumstances are atypical, I say it again. They're not typical, as in the sense of what you're saying for heritage buildings. Um, and, and again, it's not only my experience, it's third parties that are telling us this. Anything else? Our next item is number eight at eight point one is the education archive and heritage center from Denver. Um, I would just like to
to report that um, Stony Creek Historical Society had a presentation by John Aikman. Of, um, he's with the archive of the educational Hamilton, or the Hamilton Wentworth Board of Education. And when I introduced him as a speaker, I made a comment to the effect of this is the Board of Education that has torn down some extremely beautiful buildings. When I was finished and did the closing and presented him with his, his little um, gift, I made a comment that more people should know what the school board is doing to preserve the heritage of the schools in our community. So there's a, a copy in our agenda, just a very one-sided copy. This is the entire brochure. I would like to request your permission to invite John to our committee to do a presentation similar to what he did with Stony Creek so that we can get a sense of how much work they actually put into preserving artifacts and the work that they do prior to a demolition. And I, I was quite impressed. I was, I felt like I was much younger when I saw some of the stuff that came out of their, you know, the strap, and I'd never seen a strap. Oh, of course he, not. He, he brought in all these archival, archival items, and it was um, very interesting. And I just think that it's a good news story and, and something we need to share. I saw the strap. So there's one with your name on it. No. <laughs> just to reinforce this, the work on the schoolhouse on Mohawk has started so that yeah. to move it. The we'll work trails. started in the last couple of years. Wasted time, didn't it? That's good. Just one quick comment on that. It is good the school board work that's being done. But in a way, uh, it's kind of like a graveyard as well. Better to keep the building standing. I agree with be you. it uh, King George, be it Sanford, than having artifacts in a uh, school somewhere on the East Mountain. So, I agree, yeah. except that from where we sit, we cannot change that. That comes from the province, from a different level of government, from a different I department. Yeah. If we want to affect that, make a change, we have to you know, go to Toronto. So, so this is, well, I think this is a good yeah, part yeah, way for sure. there. Yeah, for sure. But I do think the community can change things. It's just, the, again, it's the will, right? You know, we, we can push, this is a, you know, the community's got to do is come, got to come from the bottom up. You know, keep that mount mind counts your way. That's Trust funny. The yeah, flat. Yeah, sure. Well, in, in addition to it, John Aikman, just from our initial conversations with the school board and whether or not we have a liaison with the school board for heritage matters, the discussion initially was with Tim Simmons that John Aikman would probably be that representative, so it's going to be good to open up a conversation. Yeah, I agree. And I think the mandate is for him to preserve what he can, so. Can I ask him to give, like, a, come down and give a full time? Uh, so we have a motion? Just for committee's information, I know several years ago we used to do the Heritage Day events in February. He he was at a couple of the events and had uh, displays in that house, which was really great. <coughs> he has a phenomenal historical context of material for every single person. So we have a motion by Kathy. Do you have a second? Come on. All in favor? Cheers. Aye. 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 Um, item nine, 9 is for motions, we have none. Uh, item 10 is no, notice of the motion, there's none. Item 11 <laughs> is our buildings and landscapes. Um, so we'll start with uh, Tivoli. Um, Council Pine is not here. Bookhouse is not here. We're all not. It's right on schedule. I do believe it's uh, mid to the end of June. It's going to be an open house uh, where the public's going to be invited to go into the completely referred thing. Do you, know, do you remember that? This is <coughs> yeah, I, it's, it's happening soon. Are you getting us an advance exclusive tour? Or? Yeah. Nobody came forward and said it. I said, if you want to go in, let me know. So is that an offer from... Uh, that's, that's still an offer. If everybody would like to go yeah, in, I can, I can arrange that. I thought was I said yesterday. Was that? I no, we said no, no, I said call me. I said email said, me and let me know. Look, you're ready to tell okay, you. Okay, 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 there you go. We're saying yes. We're saying yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'll arrange the tour. Okay, that's good. 
Uh, Andrew Slosshouse, Will's not here. Century Manor. Uh, I think uh, last meeting staff was going to contact uh, Infrastructure Ontario and uh, Ontario Heritage Trust on that. Is that correct? Uh, we had just performed the, the request to council for us to communicate with them. Oh, okay. So I think that has been passed by council. So. Okay. Uh, Beach Canal Lighthouse, Kathy? No report. Uh, Charlton Hall? Well, it's not you here. need no report. You got an award. I got an award? Well, the, the committee for the, the lighthouse got an award. Oh, sorry. That's, that's a nice little piece Most of, of shit. We were all there, we thought. Yes, and we there's must, pictures. I, I there's proof. Yeah. 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 It was nice, it was nice. Sorry. Many members arrived. Um, I haven't been to a Beach Canal meeting lately, that's why I hadn't. But yes, they did receive an award. They were at the uh, yeah. award ceremony at um, the old uh, Ancaster Town Hall. They had a display. Yep, yep, yep. they were very involved. Uh, Charlton Hall was not here. This committee appeared there will be a discussion at our next uh, subcommittee, the inventory and research subcommittee meeting regarding Charles and Paul. Uh, one John Street, Kathy? Yeah. Uh, Kathy Hall, Kathy Hall, Kathy? I'm not aware of a report or an update at the moment. It's looking pretty sad, I must say. Have you guys heard anything? I haven't heard anything, but I just want, so all right now with regards to Jones Street, because Councillor Clark and I have chatted about this, all we have right now is a report being prepared by staff. Is anything being done at this point? Through the chair, there was just a request from the committee um, to investigate that into the register, and there was a staff report that went through in January, so it has been to the register. But we think we're seeing the request made. Uh, but as a part of that process, staff have also contacted the owner, uh, provided them information about designation, and it's been in their hands in terms of whether they want to request. Okay. Um, we'll trust with Ireland. Yeah, other than just to repeat that uh, work has started, it's all fenced off, and they're actually uh, digging down below the foundation level so that they can put the structures to get to do it. That's my understanding. So at the last meeting, Michael was giving us encouraging news that uh, speaking with David Blanchard that uh, he wanted to say this facades, but uh, I, I think Mr. Blanchard uh, has two personalities because the very next day in the spectator he was saying that there was no way he was going to save those uh, facades. Um, couldn't afford it, didn't want to do it. Uh, the, uh, so the next step is his appeal of the uh, property standards, and that takes place on uh, May 5th. May 5th That's the uh, part of the appeal process, but from what I understand, they, they only can give advice. So the city can still say you can't. So we're ready to move forward, I think, on that. Sorry to jump back, Madam Chair, but I just want to go back to Mohawk Trail School. Do we know when it's going to be moved officially? Do we have a date yet? No. I was just what I could observe. Okay, I'm hoping that they'll publicize it because if anybody has been to a, um, a, a, a situation where a building has been moved, I just I followed from about 5 o'clock in the morning until it got moved to the Nash Jackson house. And believe me, I even drug my kids out of bed. They were furious. But at the end of the day, they went, thanks, Mom, because it is absolutely phenomenal to watch. Now, this this, this house, Nash Jackson, was already up on the flatbeds and, and just ready to proceed down King Street. But it was amazing. They had only one glitch the whole day. When they went to turn the corner at Centennial to go south, they didn't have the clearance for the one light standard, so they had Hydra was there, had to remove the whole signalization light standard that came in the, in the boulevard in the center island. So it was amazing. Well, okay. Kathy, if you're going to talk to John, uh, can you give us an update? Ask him. Sure. I just want to ask Councillor Pearson. Is there a particular reason that your necklace resembles the mayor's chain of office? Yes, you're the first person to say that yeah. today. Thank you. Or no, actually the second person today. Interesting. <laughs> now he's his gold. Chris is far more I'm more Oh, I like it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, our next item is uh, Buildings and Landscapes of Interest under Yellow, Delta High.
high school, Walter, before you say anything, we kind of passed over it because of the tension that was in the room. <laughs> but I think we need to congratulate staff. This yes. is our first designation of 2014. So Great. thank you very yeah. much. Well, Walter, did you? Um, uh, yeah, it's good. Um, we're talking about, uh, Lisa and I were just talking earlier before the meeting about um, that presentation that was done uh, by the consultants, maybe going forward with that to the, the children at the school. So working towards that. Cool. And if I could speak further, I spoke to some people at the awards night uh, about the possibility of uh, uh, developing the school in 2016 when it's surplused. And there's some interest with some very well known developers in town here. And then Kathy even went up to them, unbeknownst to me, after I pitched them and said to them, you know, if you guys bought that, I would be the first person to buy a conduit. So I'm sure they think it's a bit of a setback. have to explain why she doesn't live in her life in her award. Well, that's later. Oh. It should be mayor by then. Yeah, she'll be mayor by then, so she can live wherever she wants. Yeah. No, I was just going to say you might also want to keep the board counselor comments too. He's, um, Apparently, he's got some people involved well, that want to buy it too. I think yeah. he's, he's also trying to make sure that there's interest in ongoing. Well, interest fairly, he has somebody that is interested. Yeah. You might have a big board. Yeah, that's be great. Great for that's the school good. board. I'll just note also that it should now be listed as being Well, I'm actually, just uh, through the chair, it's still sort of an interest. Yeah. What's going to happen to it? Change. I don't know if that would be up to the committee and how they feel here. There are designated properties in that category. Sure. Okay. Uh, next is James Baptist. I think we've had our updates. I, yeah, I think we've had enough. Federal building, Mike. It's looking, looking quite good. I, mean, I haven't heard anything about uh, uh, prospective purchases. I haven't heard about any prospective purchases of any of the condos yet, but they might just be keeping that going. Because normally, as soon as people start to buy, they start like to advertise so that you think, oh, I'm going to get in and buy it. But I haven't heard anything about that. Because the signs are all the same. He's doing a lot of advertising. Yeah. What's that? He's doing a lot of advertising. He's he certainly is. Yeah. Yeah. I think he has a sales office in his hotel uh, just uh, right next door. Uh, oh, is that right? Yeah, that's the number. It's a good thing. Uh, Centenary Church, Wilson Square. Under our Heritage Properties Update Queen, we have Trouble Hall. Nobody lives there. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is office space. Uh, Thomas Bell. Uh, actually, just through to staff, have, have they made any progress with? Maybe Councillor Kirsten or Steve could let, if there's anything going on about somebody coming forward with a potential use for it, because I know that there was a call for that. Sorry, I'm not aware. Okay, okay. just curious. Yeah. Other than that, it, it looks like it's still standing. Weston Theatre, Councillor Carey's not here. Stinson School? Stinson School. More development, more cars parked. Looks like there's more people moving in there. I I'm, I'm, can't say I'm that happy about the sign outside that says you can buy one or rent one. Because yeah. I think that that kind of lowers the, the whole cachet of the, <coughs> of the condo building. But uh, that's what he's saying. It's a sign. So 1500 a month, you can rent one my, of these smaller uh, units. Actually, my son was in last week taking a walk, and uh, yeah. there were a number to choose from. Yeah. So I, I don't know how many are well, up for rent. He is probably trying to recoup some of his money yeah. because he hasn't sold it. That's usually a, that's a tactic that yeah. they aren't moving. And there are some people that have bought units that are, that, that are renting them. Right. And there are two people that have bought units that are selling. There's two for sale signs outside, too. But now, if I have the question, is, has this property been registered as a condominium yet? Well, it has to be yeah. in some way. Oh, it's got to be livable. What is the ruling on that? No, occupancy is different than registered as a condominium. No, don't believe it. No, they can do an occupancy charge property management period until you actually they register the condominium and hand it over to the condominium board. I'm not sure if it's being registered or I know it's draft approved, but I'm not sure if it's registering registration. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's 
So if that not let's try to sell your unit privately, and that will be right to real estate signs or selling something so that they can no longer be paying rent to the developers. So that's what's happening now because it is registered. Anyone that's occupied, it will be paying rent to. Oh, so that's oh, so nobody's paying condo fees. No, no, they're just paying rent to the area. Gotcha. Is that rent? They, they call it an occupancy charge, oh. which sometimes it goes as a credit towards your ultimate due down payment. Other times it's rent, depending on the structure of the deal. The yeah. um, next is our heritage properties update block, all seats church. I have no updates. Off Mark Gatehouse. Still there. <clears throat> That would have been such a cool playhouse for kids. I'm surprised they didn't fix it up. Or guest house for more people. I don't know why they just let it go because it's like every time I look at it, it's, it's looking worse. Uh, just on that, I think maybe your staff going to uh, contact him? Yes. I'm pretty sure we discussed that in the last meeting and I was looking for his contact information. I'll, I'll follow up on that. Just to find out whether we should take this off the list or what? When it falls down, we'll take it up. Okay. Yeah, so I took a walk on the weekend, uh, and so this is the eulogy for Gate View. Um, built 1877 as a residence for staff at the Hamilton uh, as Asylum for the Insane, uh, and there, it was being used right up until they tore it down. There was nothing wrong with it, but uh, there was no will to. Uh, to say that. Uh, so that's gone, and I'll do the eulogy soon, I think, for Roll Paul, but it's still uh, so we have there. A, should we have a minute of silence? I think we should. Yeah. You know, 1877 on the mountain, that's old. Yeah, they don't have many of those. What was that market? What was that market? Hawker. 1840. Yeah, there's a major demolition going on. Yeah, the corner of the U.S. 50s. Councilor Madam Chair, sure. thank you. Thank you, staff. Have we done um, a, a historical sort of overview of, of the building itself and in terms have we been able to get in and do that so that we have you know, some sort of record? Yes. yes. Yeah. Through, through, the chair, through the heritage impact assessment that was required under the Planning Act approvals, um, we, we had a documentation and salvage report, and there's going to be a commemorative garden um, for both buildings. Like the footprints will be outlined and from the will be used as landscape pictures. And that was presented to this committee and endorsed by this committee. Super. Okay, thank you. Just to clarify, it just triggered me to ask a question about other properties on that site that we were being denied access to them. Mm -hmm. Is there any progress on that? Well, I think that goes to that letter that um, you just received authorization to send out. So I think that would be um, did we want to modify item C to remove? Oh, yes, we should. Uh, yeah, it's gone. It's so uh, we'll revise to Grove Hall and surrounding landscape? Yeah. We have a motion. So we're moving it or getting rid of it? Hmm? Just, it just uh, moving the moving. item, but just removing gate view. Gate view is. Oh. Black to something else. Oh, to that other place. Yeah. <laughs> purgatory. No, 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 it gets beyond purgatory. Paul, did you want to put that motion forward? Yes, it would. Thank Do you. we have a second? Yeah. Well, yes. All in favor? That would be a substantial problem. May I have a motion to receive all the updates respecting that matters under our level of approval? Kathy, seconded by Michael. All in favor? 11.2 is our delegated approval of heritage permits and heritage permit applications from 98 James Street South. Um, this was an added item oh, in the yellow package. Uh, it's the former James Street Baptist Church. Does staff want to speak? I think it's been discussed up to here now. It's the, this is the memo that basically mm -hmm. summarized the, uh, the process and some of the responses to Jan's letter. 
May I have a motion to receive well, the information? Just uh, one question. Oh. Okay. Uh, if uh, if we wanted to encourage that that the bump us bump up process be made part of the bylaw, uh, how would we do that? Well, I think I think the items going to policy and design as a subcommittee to have some input as to as, as well as taking staff. I don't know at what level staff is yeah, going to look at. Come to us. Um, but it'll go through the subcommittee. Go to policy and design. Yeah, that'll come to us. So any recommendations okay. that committee members want to make at that level? So will that be coming? Yeah, you go ahead. This is like a committee meeting. I would yeah, wait until it comes. It'll come here. Yeah. 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 Well, okay. Great. Yeah. Um, policy and design has an upcoming meeting, so that's something we should probably address in the next week. Uh, may I have a motion to receive? Uh, Michael, second and by. Oh, all in favor? Here. Item 11.3 is another added item. It's an update from the clerk respecting committee members and conflict of interest. Uh, yes, so with regard to some questions from members of the last meeting, I can advise that there are no provisions within policy and procedures to prohibit any members that are on the committee from running for elected office. Um, and then as well, um, just with regard to declaring pecuniary interests or conflict of interest, that is up to an individual to declare themselves um, and cannot be declared on behalf of someone or asked to be declared. Just wondering where, where this information is, because I was looking in my, I have my handbook with me today that I got at the beginning of the, the, the term here, and I don't see if there's anything in there on conflict of interest in my hand. Correct. It's, it's, it's an individual's right to declare that or not. To declare. So how do we know what is a conflict of interest, and like this idea of how much knowledge you, you, you bring forward, and what kind of work you do, and all this, like how do does that all work? That's all gray area for me, right? It's up to the individual to declare that interest themselves. If they feel that it's a conflict, then they would need to make that declaration themselves. Uh, it's not up to any other members of the committee, um, clerks, department, city, to declare that on your behalf. But I think, are you looking for general guidelines as to what conflict of interest is? Yeah, yeah I think you know, it would be good to have a, some sort of discussion about how much knowledge you, 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 you want in people committees because inherently I think you get in like if you're working in the field wouldn't you inherently unless you can declare on everything this this situation came up with a potential member for our subcommittee the inventory research subcommittee and so I I didn't want that individual to be sharing information about what his concerns were so my suggestion was before you make any decisions with regard to participation in the committee, that you speak with the clerk's office about your concerns and questions. So there the confidentiality of the situation was maintained and the person I assume received the information that he found necessary to, uh, to make his decision about joining our subcommittee. And I think that's the best way to handle it. I don't know that it would be helpful in a generic way because the questions are often specific to an individual circumstance. Madam Chair, if I might just suggest, let me go back to where planning clerks will go back, because it was my understanding that either um, through the application process for citizen volunteers on advisory committees and or once you get appointed to a volunteer committee, that there is some training materials and documentation that clerks has. I, I recall seeing it on, for a different matter. And we can just go back and look for that material and then we can make it available for all the members of the committee. Um, you know, it is corrected as sort of a self policing or self-reporting process as opposed to a third party, mm -hmm. but in terms of providing the members with that documentation or any of the PowerPoint presentations or the handouts or those training materials so that people just have it as a resource tool for themselves, just they're familiar with it. But I thought there was some material that I had seen relating to another matter. Uh, yeah, it may only yeah. pertain to staff, I can't recall, but I do recall that every member of the advisory committee generally have to say that they signed a document declaring that they're aware. And this committee did. Yeah, they yeah. signed those documents, so we'll, I will endeavor to have that material and if it's required I'm sure that the first department a refresher can be provided at any point in time if the members feel that you know they need to have a refresher on the code of conduct and conflict of interest guidelines say just yeah. to the committee members. That's great, yeah. I yeah. appreciate that. And that, you know what I'm just annoyed because uh, I just want to get make sure I'm, I'm sort of get this cleared up because you know 
you know, member calls saying I'm in conflict of interest, right? You know, it's like you can't take that back. And, I mean, I'm so not, I was under conflict too, or mm -hmm. in conflict too, because I'm running for school trustee. So tit for tat, I guess. Eh? Oh, I did. Right? So what I would suggest is why don't we just uh, we'll go back planning and clerks will go back and deal with it, and then we'll come forward and bring material yeah. forward just so that everyone is very clear. No, I know, I know, yeah. no conflict, but uh, you know, we throw it out there, right? And we can't, we can't take it back, right? There's some sort of more of a perception as to what the guidelines are, what the legislation says, and what the police sort of put in there. So we're getting some clarity for all the members, just I think it's good for everyone to have periodically. My apologies, Madam Chair, I have another meeting we have, but I know the next item is the, the awards uh, event, and I apologize that I could not make that that night. I, I arrived late from Atlanta and got to detained at one of the airports, so it was a bit of a scramble, but I'm sorry, I heard it was a great event. But, and I, detained, yeah. <laughs> I didn't bring anything back. <laughs> Thank you. Bye now. Happy Easter, everyone. Happy Easter. Yeah, you too. Um, our next, uh, oh, may I have a motion? Uh, no, may I have a motion to receive the other papers? Nothing, so you're right on. All in favor? Okay. Our next item is 11.4, is our downtown heritage property inventory project update. It's just a verbal update. It's an added item. Back to the chair. So just to provide an update until we come back formally to the committee. Um, the staff report for the downtown Bill heritage inventory project was received at the planning committee last month. And the report and recommendations were by the council on March 26th. <coughs> the report outlined the findings of the consultants' report uh, and assessment evaluations of the property properties within the uh, downtown Rosemary's Inventory Project study area and included a list of recommendations for addition to the register as well as properties that can be considered significant bill resources but may be worthy of further assessment and potential designation. Uh, there were a number of recommendations that were approved by council including um, the fact that the actual framework developed by ERA by the consultants would help guide future inventory work um, for staff to consult with the municipal heritage committee and owners of the affected properties uh, and recommend that are recommended for inclusion in the register or for further assessment uh, before reporting back to the planning committee to actually add them to the register. Um, that staff prepare a work program in consultation with the Parish Committee for the completion of the remainder of inventory work of the properties that are, that are still outstanding on the inventory, as well as properties that have been identified for further uh, assessment and potential designation and how that works for our work program. And then finally, a preparation of a capital budget submission uh, for that work that's not really preparing for that work. Uh, and just in terms of an overview uh, for anyone who hasn't yet accessed the report, and, and as, as I said, we will be coming back with that formal review. Uh, but just in the interim, there were approximately 1,000 addresses that were identified for potential addition to the register, and about 100 addresses that were identified as significant military resources, which may warrant further assessment. Uh, but just doing a quick um, overview of those properties as it relates to actual parcels and properties that are either already protected or are, there, are already included in the register. It actually amounts to about 650 properties to add to the register potentially, and approximately 25 properties that may be done for further assessment. What, what standards are required to add a property to uh, the register then it's, uh, how hard is that to do? Through the chair. So the Ontario Heritage Act requires that uh, for properties to be added to the register, the council believes it to be of potential cultural heritage value or interest, and that they consult with the municipal heritage committee to ask for that addition. So in terms of the recommendations of the staff report, we have this list. The council has in theory said, yes, these are potential value. Um, so we'll be coming back to this opportunity to get those recommendations through you. Um, we also identified as a part of the original staff report to initiate this pilot that the owners of those affected properties would also be consulted, although that's not a requirement of the Interior Energy Act. So that will be happening concurrently to us consulting with inventory research and the main subcommittee, or and the main committee. Um, we'll also be contacting property owners of the affected properties. So could this be done in one fell swoop by council then? These 650 properties are now in the region. I guess that will be part of how we come back after vetting them through, through the committee and, uh, and receiving owner feedback, um, whether or not that will be one large list or a series of lists. We'll sure have to flesh out at this point. One, one meeting. <laughs> 650. Yeah. Well, that's, yeah, that's <laughs> a bad idea. Yeah. It, 
it wouldn't have to work that way. That it could be a collection. Okay. She's not committing to anything. Yes, thanks. Okay. Uh, ma'am, motion to receive item 5 was our heritage awards update. Um, I think we owe, owe a huge amount of thanks to Alyssa and Andrew for all of the work okay. they did. Here, here. Yeah. Full hutch, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we had we set up for 75 chairs. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I did a rock count. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. I would help over chairs, but I was trying to get the developers to buy down. <laughs> yeah, that didn't explain helping after they left. Taking the chairs down. <laughs> Michael volunteered to help. My wife did. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah. So was it Lou? It was Lou. Lou came along. <laughs> Please make sure that she knows. Well, it was Michael's birthday that day. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. I have to do stuff like that. Why did you want to do Because I was hustling. Well, what birthday? 61st. Just a kid, right? Yeah, what are you? Older than that. And just, just rough estimates, we came in a little bit under budget, so we're Oh, even better? Mm -hmm. Yes. There's a lot of enthusiastic people there. I like that. May I have a motion to receive that item? All in favor? Is there any other items? Otherwise, uh, just uh, on outstanding business, uh, the copy building. Uh, anything happening? Sorry, Mr. Chair, I did attempt to contact the property owners, and they have not responded. They have not responded. So, what, what should we do on this one? Write a story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, maybe. Yeah. Any, any, other, any, any other suggestions? Uh, you have to look at it against specifics. I think it would have to, you know, we should probably do the usual of talk to the board counselor and see where we can go from here. Because um, I think it would be a matter of taking a while on the board committee would like to do so, uh, Jason Farr. Should we, uh, should we as a council, uh, uh, sorry, as a committee, ask him to do that? Yes. So we've got a, a motion request yes. for Copley uh, to engage the conversation with Councilor Park. Park. Yeah. yeah. No, it's okay. No, it's okay. So, so, so Paul, okay. Second, Great. Michael, all in favor? Um, and do you want a formal request for review of the cemeteries? Or no, I, that's, that's sufficient. Do you want to keep A couple of items. I would okay. like assistance from committee members. Um, one of our community members in Winona is, um, has been very pleased about the response from staff regarding um, grant slash um, loan money for her heritage property. She needs a slate roof. She's had a quotation for one slate roofer, but 
doesn't know where to find another. So if anyone has any contact information, I would appreciate that. And also I'm going to pass around Stony Creek Historical Society's having a huge book sale next month. The dates are on here. It's at the Stony Creek Municipal Center, which was the old Stony Creek City Hall, which is actually a new Stony Creek City Hall. So, But it's out on number eight highway. All the information is here. And on May the 7th, Wednesday, John Nixon is speaking at Stony Creek Historical on toy soldiers. Thank you. So on it, retention of original windows, that's part of our list here as well. I think that's moving along pretty good. Are we going to be able to um, move that forward? We've got it. Well, there's the draft document that has to come back to policy on this budget. And then the Education Subcommittee, we have a member that's actually been drafting up the uh, corresponding brochure. We just, with the awards, we haven't had a meeting recently, so next month. Mm -hmm. But didn't we have our meetings already for that? With um, local, was that one with our current review? And well, we made some revisions, but that document, the revised document, has never actually gone through the committee to come here. Okay. That was just a joint, sub it was so a joint meeting that we had, so we need to get that document just to that. So that's the next step? As far as the document part and then the, the, the flyer part, it looks good. It gets, um, yeah. And then I think it, it sort of all comes together as a package that the committee can Do you have that uh, flyer? Is it produced yet? No, the, the no, education please. subcommittee is, is fine. I'm just trying to work on that right now. I see. We've got a, a member of the, the subcommittee that's been drafting it. So. When do you think that may come? Uh, she said she was going to bring something back to our next meeting, so we'll see. beginning.